Hey guys, it's Jaden Clark here from Jazz Lesson Videos and today I'm going to be talking about simple ways in which we can take our playing to the next level. When practicing our instrument, it is so often the case that we feel like our ability plateaus or our sessions become stale and unenjoyable. Now, this is a problem because this is when players of all levels with great potential will throw in the towel. So, what can we do to fix this? I'm going to take us through five different styles of workouts which can add variety to our practice and break those plateaus whenever they occur. We're going to check out everything from ways to practice technique, voice leading, tune learning, and much more. The styles of exercises that we are going to check out can all be found in the New Year Starter Pack. This is a great resource if you want to strengthen your fundamentals or if you want to start taking improvisation more seriously. Most importantly, this is the kind of resource that will make sure your practice is never stale. To download this resource or any of the individual PDF packages that are included, feel free to click the link below. Now, the first thing that we can look at when trying to break plateaus and trying to make our practice a little more interesting is always going to be technique. Now, when it comes to technique practice and building muscle memory, I like to go to none other than chromatic approach notes and enclosures. Now, the particular exercise I'm going to show you is one of my all-time favorites, and you can actually find this in the 15 approach note and enclosure workouts for jazz musicians PDF package. And we're gonna check it out right now. So this is enclosure exercise number one. <laughs> Okay, so before we take a deeper look at this particular pattern, of course, it is good that we have a refresher on approach notes and enclosures. Of course, approach notes approach a target note from either direction, that can be above or below, and enclosures are going to enclose the note or wrap around the note. Often, this will be two notes or three notes, and this can be in the case of both approach notes and enclosures. So looking at this particular enclosure exercise, we can see that we have scale degrees on each of the downbeats. This is with the pattern both ascending and descending. What you'll also notice is between those scale degrees, we can see we generally have two notes above and one note below. This is, of course, on the ascending version. Of course, the only exception is when you have a half step between scale degrees, right? you're then going to put one note above and then two notes below. And vice versa on the way down, we have two notes below the target note, one note above. And notice that that one note above, when we're descending, is going to be a diatonic note. Of course, a lot of the times you could add a chromatic note. For example, in measure two there, you could absolutely make that A in the lead up to B3. You could make that A an A flat, that's gonna sound just fine. We just opt for that diatonic note because, well, quite frankly, we think it sounds a little better. Now, of course, the reason this kind of practice is good for us is because it enables us to practice note placement. Of course, we have target notes on downbeats, and that is going to help improve our voice leading. So you can never really go wrong when practicing this kind of technique work. Of course, when we do practice this kind of technique work, it is worth putting in the time to really get this burning through the keys. That way, you're not even gonna have to try for this sort of material to come out in your actual improvisation. Okay, so the next style of workouts we're going to check out is going to be phrase work. Now, of course, when we go ahead and practice phrases, it's not only about the memorization of that given phrase, but it's also about the transposition of that given phrase. Now, of course, there's many different types of phrase we can work on. We can be 
over a certain harmonic device, be it a major 251, minor 251, a 3625, tritone substitutions, plenty of different harmonic devices in which you can practice phrases over. But you can also practice diatonic versus chromatic. You can practice phrases with more out sounding chord scale options. Plenty of different ways we can go about this. Now, a phrase that we're going to check out together is going to be a phrase from the 50 major 251 phrases PDF package. And this is going to be a diatonic phrase. More specifically, diatonic phrase number seven. So let's take a listen to this phrase now. <laughs> As you can see, even though we're using only chord scale notes, there is no chromaticism in this phrase at all, you can see how smooth we're still able to voice lead. Now the best way to break down phrases, in my opinion, is to look for target notes, i.e. look for chord tones that land on downbeats and then fill in the gaps from there. Now of course, that particular rule is broken with the beginning of the phrase as we start on the 11. In fact, that whole rule is broken in the whole first measure because we also land on the nine on beat three. So we have no chord tones on the downbeats in the first measure. So we want to think to ourselves, okay, well, what is the next note? Where are we resolving to? Well, that nine on beat three slides nicely down to beat one, but all the motion is moving towards that five chord in which we land on the flat seven. Okay, so in the second measure there on the five chord, we've got the flat seven on beat one, then we also have the fifth on beat three. So we've got those chord tones on downbeats to aim for. Now, after the five chord, we resolve downwards and by step nicely to the third of the one chord, and then the phrase rings out from there. Now, because we don't have as many places to anchor ourselves, meaning that we don't have as many chord tones that are landing on downbeats. What you can also do is you can just simply go ahead and break this phrase down measure by measure. Even if that's giving you a little bit of difficulty, you can break it down into two beats at a time, transpose those, and then put the whole phrase back together, upper half step, upper whole step, into whatever key you're transposing it into. Now, the great thing in particular about phrase work is like I mentioned at the beginning of introducing the phrases, you can practice whatever kind of phrase you want. So if the diatonic phrases are getting a little easy for you, if the major two, five, one phrases are getting a little easy for you, go ahead and throw in a minor two, five, one. It's going to be some harder transposition to throw in because you have a lot of different chord scales that you could potentially be dealing with. Okay, so the next way that we can change up our practice, the next style of workout is simply going to be working with a different scale. This is most likely going to be a scale that perhaps we don't find ourselves using that often in our improvisation. So in this particular example, I'm actually just gonna take the altered scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the altered scale, and then I'm gonna go ahead and play a scale exercise using that altered scale. Of course, it's a more exotic dominant chord scale option, regularly used in something like a minor two, five, one, or over a dominant chord that has any kind of alteration. So here is the altered scale. Okay, so quickly taking a look at the altered scale, we've got a our dominant seven, so our one, a major third, and our flat seven, but we also have our flat nine, our sharp nine, our sharp 11, and our flat 13. So all the different alterations are accounted for with this one particular scale. You can also think of it as the seventh mode of the melodic minor. So I played C altered scale then, you can also think of it simply being a C sharp or a D flat melodic minor scale starting on the note C. So jumping into the scale exercise now, this is the best way to get fluency in a scale that we are perhaps not as used to. And you can find all of these kinds of exercises in the Scales for Jazz Improvisation PDF package. <laughs> So I'm going to be choosing scale exercise number four. And what this does, as you can see, it simply moves one, two, three, four, five up the scale. This is when the pattern is ascending. 
and then it descends down the scale before adding a little skip before moving up and playing that exact same cell again up diatonically through the scale. Of course, on the way down, well, we have to do something a little different to make sure that the voice leading is still good. So we're just going to ascend one, two, three, four up the scale. So this is one note less. Change direction, move down the scale, and then we have that same skip that allows us to voice lead down. Remember that you can find deep dives on all of these exercises that we have covered so far and more in the New Year Starter Pack. And having a resource like this will mean that your practice and playing will have variety no matter what your skill level is. This resource also features tune analysis and voice leading. So let's check some of that out now. Okay, so the next way you can spice up your practice is by simply learning tunes. Now there's plenty of different ways we can go about learning tunes and I'm gonna go over a couple of my favorite ways now using the standard analysis package to help with our analysis. So here we're looking at the tune, all the things you are, of course, a very, very common standard. And we can see that on the page, we've got our chord symbols, we've got our chord arpeggios, and we also have the Roman numeral analysis above. Now, of course, you can use any one of these bits of information to help us learn a tune. The good thing about the Roman numeral analysis is that we can always be relating the analysis back to a home key or the key of the one. So that actually makes the analysis key agnostic, meaning that we don't have to be in a particular key in order to break this tune down. Of course, what you can also see in the Roman numeral analysis is when we have key changes. Now, key changes are sometimes gonna make the analysis a little easier to read, or they're actual key changes, right? When the tune actually wants to modulate into a different key, just like we have in the C section here. In fact, we can see the key change into the key of concert G just a little bit before that C section, and then it remains for just a little bit. So again, you can just see how it makes that analysis a little easier to understand. Now, of course, how do we go ahead and apply this sort of thing to our instrument? Well, we can use the arpeggios on the page. So here is just some of the tune arpeggios being played one, three, five, and seven. <laughs> What we can also do is we can go ahead and actually change up the order of those arpeggio notes. Here is one, five, three, seven. Now, if you're feeling comfortable with something like that, you can actually go ahead and change up the arpeggios entirely. So use different combinations of arpeggio patterns. if you're feeling comfortable with that you can simply go ahead and play a whole chord tone solo so that is soloing using only one three five and seven <laughs> what we are doing there is we are simply building a solo from the ground up so we can get as inside of the harmony as we possibly can because we know that voice leading from chord tone to chord tone is always going to sound melodic okay so this is how you can get as inside of the harmony as you possibly can giving ourselves the best chance to get the kind of harmony in our ear now you do this kind of practice enough you can be certain that you are internalizing the harmony of the tune. Of course, what you can also do from there is you can move to chord scale soloing, so taking the chord scales and using only the chord scales to solo. And of course, you can simply just play over the tune. All of these things are going to help contribute to us memorizing the particular tune that we've chosen. 
Okay, so the fifth and final style of workout we're going to check out is voice leading. And this tends to be one of the trickiest kinds of workouts that we can do, but I think you'll also find it is one of the most useful workouts that you can do. Now, voice leading is a concept that is easy enough to understand. Voice leading is simply getting to chord tones in the smoothest way possible. So that's going to mean we are going to be trying to lead to a chord tone by a half step or a whole step. Now, the big problem for us jazz musicians is actually putting that into practice because it's easy enough to understand the concept, but when we are actually improvising, it's easier said than done to put chord tones in the right place and to lead to them in the smoothest way possible. Now, a great resource that can help us fix that is going to be the voice leading workbook. So I'm gonna go ahead and practice a tune from that. It's gonna be all the things you are. So looking at this particular exercise, what you're going to notice is that we have chord tones on downbeats, and more specifically, we have chord tones on the downbeat wherever there is a chord change. So if there's only one chord in the measure, there's going to be a chord tone on beat one. If we have two chords in a measure, we're going to have a chord tone on beat one and beat three. What you'll also notice is that we have different combinations of ways to voice lead. There's going to be some going to be chromatic enclosures, going to be diatonic enclosures, going to be diatonic approach notes and chromatic approach notes, all leading by whole step or half step to the chord tone on the downbeat. So because we have the notes there on the page, it is going to be our job to hit those notes on the page, regardless of what we do to fill in the gaps. So. When it comes to filling in the gaps, we want to see if we can also be as smooth as possible. Ideally, we're going to use eighth notes, but the idea behind using those eighth notes is that no matter where we end up, we could end up an octave away from the notes on the page. We've got to make sure that we still force ourselves to hit the notes on the page. So enough of me speaking. Have a listen to what I came up with over the first half of the tune. <laughs> So notice how slowly I took it. Once you get the ability to speed an exercise like this up, well, you're going to be certain that you'll have great voice leading skills when it comes to improvisation. So the key to practicing an exercise like this is to take it slow. What you're also going to find is that the more you practice a grid like this, a fill-in grid like this, you'll notice that your muscle memory is going to want to take similar routes through the fill-in grid, and that is totally fine. If you find yourself doing that, let it happen because that means you are creating muscle memory that can be utilized in your own improvisation. By incorporating these different styles of exercises into our practice routine, we can more effectively overcome plateaus in our ability and keep our practice sessions interesting. When in doubt, we can always resort back to technique work like adding a new scale or shredding some approach notes and enclosures. We can also look into tune learning, voice leading, and phrase work when we are looking to apply more of that language into our own solos. To dive even deeper into these concepts and much more, be sure to click the link below to download the New Year Starter Pack. Of course, be sure to click the like, the subscribe, and the bell button so you always know when we are releasing new content, new videos, and more. And as always, feel free to let us know if there's anything you would like us to get into next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.